What's going on everybody, Cigar Show Tim here with another edition of Tobacco Talk, where I review a cigar and then I give you my thoughts on it in four key areas. Flavor, draw, construction, and burn. It's everything you want to know about that cigar, but it's from my palate's perspective, and then I rate it as to whether I think it's nub-worthy or not. Okay, so the cigar for this review is one that debuted at PCA this year, 2023. I tried it the last full day of the trade show, walked up to the Sinistro booth, said hey to my buddy James that I had walked past, waved, said hey a couple other times throughout the trade show, stopped by, and he proceeded to hand me this cigar right here. This is the Sinistro Mr. Desflorado. It is the newest release in the Mr. series, and we'll get into the blend and all of that wonderful information on it, but I got to give you a nice close-up look at it right there. Absolutely beautiful. But if we're going to review it, there's only one thing left to do. Let's light it up. All right, I went with a nice, simple, easy, straight cut on this. On the cold draw, get a little bit of like a honey sweetness with some brown sugar in there and just a little bit of like some grassy hay. So, let's toast her up. Okay, upon initial light up, I'm picking up flavor notes of light hay, a bit of florality that's in there. There's a little bit of like a white black pepper spice dance kind of taking place in there as well. And then a little bit of some woodiness that's in there. There's like a medium cedar wood that's in there. So I'm going to jump into the first third. When I come back, I'll let you know the blend on the cigar, any other information I think you might need to know, and uh, of course, how the cigar's been treating me. Okay, let me show you the burn here at the end of the first third. You can see right there. The burn is doing really well. Second dimes right there. Some people don't care about how long of an ash, all those different things. I've said many times on my reviews, I'm not a fan of long ash, not a big wowie to me, but I do appreciate good construction, which is one of the elements that I base, whether the cigar is noteworthy or not, on. Okay, let's talk about the blend on this cigar, because it's very unique and it's something that um, I had never heard of until I talked with James at PCA about this. So this has a Connecticut Seed Desflorado wrapper. I'll get to what that means in just a minute. It has an African Cameroon binder on it, and it's got fillers from the Dominican Republic, Colombia, and Nicaragua. So that's the blend on the cigar. This is the Robusto size, by the way. What I'm having is the 5x50. Uh, Robusto is what I've got here. And Desflorado, what does that mean? Uh, this is actually the fifth in the Mr. Series for Sinistro. They've got the... Uh, red, white, black, gold, and now Desflorado. So Desflorado, so it's part of a process, if you will. So when the tobacco leaf is growing, specifically, uh, right before it seeds, so there's a little bit of a flower, right before it seeds, you pull the flower head, the head, the bulb of the flower off, essentially. And what that does is a couple different things, according to an article with Half Wheel, as well as my conversation with James at PCA, is it does a couple things is it helps darken the hue or the coloring of the tobacco leaf but it also brings some nice sweetness in with it because the tobacco plant isn't focusing on producing the seeds and having the flower bloom and all those different things so it puts all of the energy into the tobacco leaf so desflorado in case you're not familiar with it it actually just means to deflower so that's what desflorado means so you know the blend on it you know what uh, it stands for, what the Desflorado represents, what that is defined as. Now the flavor notes in this first third. That nice woodiness is absolutely still there. The pepper's dancing back and forth. I would say it's much more of a black pepper now than it is a white pepper, but it's not overpowering by any means whatsoever. There's still a really uh, nice woodiness that's in there, and there's still just this like sweetness that's in there, obviously from the Desflorado wrapper, there's just this nice sweetness that initially on the cold draw, I picked it up as like honey and brown sugar, different things like that. Um, there's just this nice sweetness that balances it all out. In terms of strength right now, I would say this is probably a medium minus in strength. It may look deceiving because it's a lighter wrapper, but it's actually got a little bit more on the strength end than you would expect from a traditional lighter wrapper. And so I would say it's a medium strength, and right now it's probably medium bodied as well. But I'm enjoying it, it's doing well. The draw on this is right where I like it. Smoke output is extremely plentiful. I'm enjoying it quite a bit. So I'm gonna jump into the second third. When I come back, I'll let you know any changes in the flavor profile, any more information I think you might need to know, and how it's going. Okay, let me show you the burn here at the end of the second third. As you can see here, 
it is doing quite well a little bit of a wave to it not a big deal for me but the construction on it is still doing very very nicely okay flavor and flavor profile in the second third it got a little bit more on the like earthy floral woodsy kind of end in uh you know my experience with it this time the pepper is pretty much stayed where it was it hasn't climbed up hasn't gone down it's still a black pepper nothing that's overpowering nothing on the retrohale that makes your nostrils tingle it's not going to clear your sinuses nothing like that whatsoever but the pepper is still there the floral note is definitely coming to the forefront uh, and i attribute that more to the african cameroon um, because i've had some uh, different uh, Cameroon wrappers that I, I pick up some floral notes in from time to time and this is one that is very in my opinion pretty uh, pronounced and then there's that still like medium cedar wood note that's in there there's a little bit of earthiness that's an undertone on the long finish uh, but there's a really nice if you retrohale on the long finish there's a really nice creamy note that's come in and it helps balance and kind of neutralize a little bit of the pepper and a little bit of the the spice that's in there and gives it a really nice creamy finish with that floral note and the creaminess it is doing very very well so this comes in two different Vitolas. Uh, when it was released, uh, they initially shipped them out right after all of the orders were placed at PCA. From my understanding, when I talked with James towards the end of it, uh, it was very well uh, ordered and the response to it was very overwhelming in a positive way. And so you should be able to find at your local brick and mortar, uh, if they carry Sinistro cigars, then you should be able to find the Mr. Desplorado because it did ship out, like I mentioned, at the end of PCA. So it should be available in two different Vitolas. There's the 5x50 Robusto and then the 6x52 Toro. Those are the two initial Vitolas that it's offered in. And the price point on this is very, very reasonable. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, the Half Wheel article said uh, that it was $9 for the Robusto and 10 for the Toro or 10 and 11, something to that effect. Very affordable. So I'm going to jump in to the final third of the cigar when I come back. I'll let you know whether I think it's noteworthy or not. And that'll all be based on whether or not the flavor profile changes, strength, all those different things. I will say the strength on this is probably a good solid medium now. Still a medium, medium to full body uh, in depth of flavors as well. So here's to the final third. All right, let me show you the burn here at the end of the final third. Here you can see the cigar has got a nice burn line. Ash is still stacking up nicely, and then you can tell that the wrapper did unfortunately crack just a little bit right there, but it held off until the very end to do that, so no complaints from me. Okay, flavor profile as the cigar wraps up. Strength on this, I would say that it ended at a medium plus with a medium full body still. The most prominent flavor notes, that black pepper did ramp up just a little bit with that Nicaraguan tobacco and the fillers, it did ramp up. Not a crazy amount, but you're gonna notice a little bit of spice if you retrohale. It's not gonna clear your sinuses, but it's definitely gonna be noticeable. So you've got that Nicaraguan black pepper spice that's in there. That creamy note has absolutely stayed there through the final third, which is really, really enjoyable. And then that medium cedar wood is still there. It has stayed constant and consistent throughout the entire cigar. And then that earthiness has pretty much fallen back and that floral note is just a little bit there on the long finish with that creamy note. So, Mr. Desflorado, the deflowered one. Do I think this is noteworthy? Based on the flavor profile and everything with it, the cedar wood that stayed constant, I'm not a huge fan of like oaky wood and cedar wood is more of what my palate enjoys. So for that, it gets definitely, you know, some good consideration. The creamy note, I absolutely love it in there. And the black pepper was not too much. So for me and my palate, this is definitely a noteworthy cigar. This is a cigar that if you are newer into Connecticut shade wrappers and lighter cigars and you want to start dabble into something that is a little bit more on the you know spicy end and has a little more kick to it and strength wise ends at a good solid medium plus as opposed to a mild plus to a medium minus this is a really good cigar for you to check out for that I think this has done very very well in this review I enjoyed it when I had it at PCA like I mentioned at the beginning of this video and I think this is something that you should go and check out, whether it's the Robusto, the Toro, go and check it out for yourself. Uh, one thing to note with the wrapper and a little bit of split at the end there, that happened because when I took off the band, 
a little sliver of the tobacco leaf as I pinched the band, it came off and that's why it cracked. It wasn't anything to do with the cigar. Just wanna make that clarification. It was nothing to do with the construction of it. It was me peeling off the band. The band did come off clean, but again, I had that little pinch on the Connecticut wrapper, which is a pretty delicate wrapper for this specific cigar uh, with the nature of it and you know, making sure that everything is flavor and color and everything that they want in that wrapper leaf. Very nice, had a very sort of silky texture to it in your fingers. Well packed, didn't have any issues with the burn. The draw stayed nice through the entire time. So it is definitely a nub worthy cigar in my opinion. If you've had the Mr. Dutch Florado from Sinistro Cigars, put some comments down below. Let me know if you got the same experience that I did, if you enjoy the flavor profile, if this is something that sounds like it's right up your palate and you have one similar to mine, let me know if this is something you're gonna be looking for. Sinistro, I know it is based here out of Southern California and the majority of their cigars are uh, manufactured down in the Dominican Republic at the La Aurora factory. So that's where they're produced. But uh, I know they're, they're pretty prevalent here on the West Coast and they're definitely starting to go nationwide and make a big uh, splash within the industry. So go and check out the Mr. Desolorado from Sinistro Cigars. If you have a palate like mine, I do not think you're going to be disappointed. But that's gonna do it for this edition of Tobacco Talk. Enjoy your cigar journey, everybody. I'm Cigar Show Tim. As always, I'll see you.